Previously on the Osrin Tales Live D&D. As our heroes rest up in Asari after dodging the wrath of the Thieves Guild, Mayor McMuddybottom invites the whole adventuring guild to attend a statue unveiling and festival in their honor. Everyone has a great time partying the night before they head out on their next quest, and a statue of Sift is revealed to commemorate her death and resurrection while fighting the evil Drazan, who was plaguing the town of Asari and the peninsula formerly known as the Black Reach. Rowan finds a knife once owned by his great uncle Robin Gine in a pawn shop as the group travels through Reneas LNR to start their new quest. Their current mission? Help their new ally, a paladin named Vilmar, find and explore Elantris, an old ruined castle and temple that was built and populated by the followers of the elven goddess Tristiel, the Silver Lady, and the human god, the Justicar. The group searches for some lore about the castle, and Vilmar, being a paladin of the Justicar, is able to learn from some humans in the area that the Justicar and Tristiel were in a romantic relationship, and that the elves try to keep that relationship a secret in order to maintain their outward appearance of purity. The group also learns that Vilmar's family heirloom, the sword he is trying to find by retracing his ancestors' footsteps, was forged by the first Justicar as he died. It is a champion's weapon that he gifted to Azer the Tough as Kek and his orcish followers attacked the castle, now known as Elantris, which is an elvish phrase that roughly translates to Tristiel's mourning or Tristiel's sadness, named after the moment her lover was slain by Kek and their castle temple destroyed. Leaving Reneas Alinar, the group travels for the better part of a day and arrives at a roadside inn near the forest that contains Elantris. Quothe decides to take a bath in their bathhouse and possibly contracts a disease from the foul fetid waters. The rest of the group steers clear of this oddly befouled liquid and takes to drinking in the common room, where Quothe and Rowan are being hit on by the ladies who own the inn. But Vilmar's paladin senses of good and evil reveal that the tavern maidens aren't maidens at all, but in fact, they are horrible, grotesque creatures called hags who revel in filth and squalor and live to destroy beauty. The group fights the hags valiantly. Rowan learns that his great uncle's dagger does frost damage, and Vilmar's paladin power to smite evil proves to win the day. What else will our group encounter on the road to Elantris? Will the group lay claim to this inn now that the hags are dead? And will Vilmar learn more about his ancestor, Azer the Tough, and the location of his family's ancestral sword? Find out now on episode 23 of the Osrin Tales Live D&D. Enjoy the show. Episode a lot.
no sound. That one? Hey, there we go. We got sound now. Ha ha! I did it! Uh, can everybody else, can you guys hear the, the, the crew? Hello. I think you Hola, como está? Hello. The crew. Alright. <laughs> we did it! We, we have words and things. Alright. Uh, if it's a little quiet, I can bring us up a little bit here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, welcome in episode 23 of the Osrin Tales live D&D adventures. We have uh, one player missing tonight, uh, the genie bruh. Uh, it is the wonderful Kelly Hates Games birthday weekend this week. So, Jeannie and Kelly are out of town. We miss them very much. Um, Rowan is suffering from the Sifaherpa gonococca AIDS. And, um, you know, he's, 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 he's going to be taking a, a little bit of a back seat uh in this episode <laughs> um okay. but uh but yeah uh we're we're in it tonight and first things first let us go around the uh ye olde table here and let everybody know who you're playing we've got with us tonight the chattest chad Quothe, the Goliath Barbarian. We've got Sangretti. I'm playing Tails and Pages. I'm a Cobalt Wizard. We've got the Rageous Rachel. I'm playing Reshi, a Dragonborn Monk. And we have Jovis25. And I'm playing Vilmar of the White Raven, a Human Paladin. I'll be honest, I almost said your character name. <laughs> <laughs> like you do so i was i was looking at your on the on the screen and i saw your picture instead of your face cam and i almost said the character instead of your, your actual <laughs> it's vilmar anyway, playing vilmar tonight <laughs> yeah it's Vil you guys didn't know vilmar is actually a real person in real life it's all been a ruse this whole time D and D is real. Magic is real. Paladins are real. Um, he actually uh, threatened to divine smite me if I ever revealed that. So this is the last episode, everybody. I'm gonna die. Uh, he's actually a vengeance paladin in real life, and uh, I'm dead now. So <laughs> thanks for thanks for watching, everyone. No, um, <laughs> get the eulogy ready. Uh, we bring you now back to where we left off the former session uh a little bit in the future it is uh the next day our party has slept in a burned out just vile in as it were anyway because it was a hag's den and as we all know hags uh, are not ones for cleanliness. They revel in just vile filth. Um, <clears throat> but our group took uh, some time through the night to get uh, <clears throat> get get themselves some treasure. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly go through. Uh, um, was that disease I contracted from the water part of the treasure? Uh, it, it is. It has, uh, it has not... You got mega herpes. <laughs> it has not yet reared its ugly head. 
I will, I'll let you know when uh, when that <laughs> when that kicks in. Save him for uh, a fight when we're about to die, and he's gonna save us. Yeah, it's actually like. Um, I'm gonna it? Google some good diseases here. H I want to see if there's it's any like chance HPV on a roll here. B or whatever. It's actually like a good. Oh great. <laughs> oh, I was thinking he'd have some like Yersin or something like that. Typhoid fever. <laughs> It's the bacteria responsible for the bubonic plague back in the day. Bacteria. I don't think that is waterborne, though. Um, Yersinia pestis, yeah. It comes in multiple forms. Oh, well then. Get ready to have your skin fall off. <laughs> I was no. actually suggested on a, on a stream earlier this week. I was like, hey, you know, one of our guys got a disease, and I don't remember who it was, but someone suggested that I just have all your skin fall off. So. Oh, gosh. That'd be fun to draw, though. Think about that. Would it be? Well, no. Would it be? That's, that's not a good idea. Would it, would it be fun <laughs> to draw? Well, would it be, question is, will Vilmar wait for his skin to fall off before he cures him of his disease? Depends on how much he doesn't like you. <laughs> Depends on how much Quothe wants new tattoos. I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a problem. I mean, if we could cure Gene Rowan of fishhood. I mean, we cured Sift of death, so there are a lot of <laughs> options here, guys. Yeah, there's a lot. You, you could just let him die and then resurrect him again. Just make a disease called <sighs> Dilly Dilly Dogs. Dilly Dog disease? <laughs> Death by Dilly Dog. Right. <laughs> Stuffed pickle disease. <laughs> I don't even want to imagine what that would be in a humanoid born disease. <laughs> Stuffed pickle disease. Good God. I um, believe that is called gonorrhea, sir. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Man, if only we could use copyrighted music on this stream, I would play Why Does It Hurt When I Pee by Frank Zappa. Oh my god. I think I'm just, I mean, I already got a disease. I'm going back to the uh, little swimming hole over there. Going, doubling down on a more, yeah. more gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping it's, you know, something good. Maybe it's this a, gonna cure, it's maybe like, it's a free yeah, feet I... disease. If I get, hey, if I drink this dirty water again, it'll cure me of the disease. Uh, all right, <laughs> but you guys do find some treasure throughout the night. Um, you find a whole bunch of money. Um, if you want the specific, like coinage values, I have the specific coin. Uh, numbers. I'll put those in chat. Uh, Any so electrum? Can... No, no electrum. <laughs> Why would I do that? Because <laughs> you hate yourself. That's, that's the only reason <laughs> to use that stuff. It's the only reason to keep track of that garbage. <laughs> uh, so I put this specific, like, you know, specific values of what, gold, it? silver, and copper that you guys have. But you find in total, uh, one. 1,162 gold and 25 copper pieces. Uh, but that's nice. that's split up into gold, silver, and copper coins. I put the, the specific totals of each coinage uh, in our group chat there. Uh, so, so should someone we... Someone wants uh... to break that up and do whatever, when, whenever you want. Just, you know, feel free. What'd you say is 1,062 and 25 uh, coppers? In the chat, maybe. Oh, it's it's actual like broke down into different. Yeah, it's uh, actually currencies. 546 gold, 5614 silver, and 5485 copper. But I just there's wanna, five of us, so yeah. I'll I'll do some quick math on it, guys. Continue. You do you do you. Um. Somebody has to come up. Listen, with the this is a real world. They have real. It's not just a nice. Hey, they have 1500 gold pieces, even. <laughs> Most people don't even, you know, use gold. That's a lot of people just use copper and silver. So, you know, they've murdered a lot of people. They've accumulated a lot of money, but a lot of it's in silver and copper. 
Um, you find uh, a bunch of scrolls throughout the 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 kitchen area and throughout the inn in general. Um, <clears throat> I'll put uh, the specific ones in uh, in your chat log as well. But uh, you find one scroll each: fireball, lightning bolt, banishment, witch bolt. Magic Circle, Teleportation Circle, and Bane. Um, uh, Tails lays claim to all of them. Tails lays claim so to we can all copy them. them. Nice. <laughs> that's, not, that's not even a joke. That's that's literally what I'm doing. I have I have a section here labeled potions, but they're not necessarily potions. Uh, you find three bottles of poison. Uh, which, you know, someone could use to, like, coat their weapon with or, like, taint someone's food with or whatever. It's just your standard generic poison, right? Put it on your weapon, it does, like, 1d6 poison damage on a hit, and then it, like, disappears. So if I apply urine to my weapon, what do I get? Uh, <laughs> Jack uh, shit. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Urine's sterile, so <laughs> it's not gonna... Yeah, that's actually not your, a bad thing. Coat your coat your weapon in urine and it tastes salty, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get two two flasks of regular oil and uh yeah, you just find two jars. Attracts of... all hags with a fetish. Right. <laughs> that's... Uh yeah, two two jars of urine. <laughs> um Genie asked to have any weird and mysterious item placed in his bag. So this first item, I think Rowan lays claim to. Um, an empty jar uh, that whispers. You can't make out what the whispers are, but it's just like an empty mason jar that contains whispers in it. And I'll let him do whatever he wants to do with that whenever he comes back but it's a weird item so i figured he'd want to he want would want to take that uh you also find some magic components um for uh, a jar filled with 14 rat tails a jar with five newt eyes um <clears throat> you also find a uh, a small painting um it is literally it's like three or four inches wide by like two or three inches tall uh it's a very small painting um that looks like the inn it's like a it's like a painting of the inn um when you guys found this last night it was uh you could have sworn it had a cloudy sky in uh in the in the painting um but now uh as you look at it the uh the painting uh looks like it's raining in the painting and uh as you look out the window of the inn uh you can actually see some storm clouds brewing on the horizon <clears throat> is this a weather predicting painting because dibs You'd use some of your magic to identify this painting, and that is indeed uh, what it is. The small painting, uh, not only does it predict the weather, but it, like, predicts the weather uh, within a, like, five-mile radius of where you are for 24 hours. That's pretty cool. So, like, as you move, the painting actually changes. So, like, uh, every night at midnight... Uh, the painting will change to be centered on wherever you are. The so and like the actual image will change, and then also it predicts the weather for the next day. Uh, okay, I feel like we should kind of give that to Genie. <laughs> it's cool for me, but that seems like something he'd pull out of his pocket. Like, is it raining? Yeah, no, no, it no, sounds like a boomer thing. Something like Bill Maher would look at before he falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> And uh, you find one other item of interest here. And uh, I do think this is something that Tail would be interested in. Um, what you got? What you got? A thick 
and dusty tome. He filled... sold them at thick. <laughs> <laughs> filled with writing so small that it is barely readable. Like, you need a magnifying item to even be able to read uh, the writing in this very, very thick uh, tome. Uh, when you do start to read, and I don't know what you're going to do with this, and I'm already regretting putting this in here for the amount <laughs> of stuff that I'm going to have to make up for it. Uh, but you find that it contains all of the conversations had in a small village nearby. It's a small village that exists in the forest. Um, it's not on, like, the world map or anything, because it's just too small to, like, warrant a marker. Um, but yeah, it's a small little village, um, in the forest. And, uh, literally every conversation that has ha been had in that village in the last year is perfectly recorded in this book. Okay, I demand that this is that session tonight. Jeff, you just have to tell us all the conversations. Verbatim. All, just all just start talking. Conversations yep. Verbatim. <laughs> right now. Fill in that lore. Just do it. <laughs> so the first conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel gets banned from D. &D. Um, someone was like, Hey, I heard that there's uh, a fucking white dragonborn monk. And the <laughs> other one, the other person says, "Oh yeah, why do I care?" And the other first person, <laughs> the first person says, "Yeah, I don't know. It's who who cares?" And the second person's like, "Why would you bring something like that up?" And the first person, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the first person's Point like, thing. "I'm bored. What else is there to talk about? We live in the woods. There's literally nothing." <laughs> goes on here and I, I heard about this adventuring party and it goes on like that for a while that's the, the author and tales the have a good second night. conversation <laughs> um, is about a, uh, a guy who's suffering from gonorrhea oh man <laughs> he's, he's talking to the local medicine man <laughs> And uh, he tells, get a hedge witch cure. He tells the the medicine man tells him to go bathe in the bathhouse at the inn on the edge of the forest. Did I do that? Did Only good this? things will happen if you do that. <laughs> um. And so, yeah. Now, now we know where Quothe got his gonorrhea from. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. Um, you guys find that treasure? I honestly, I just thought that book was kind of cool because it was like on a list of things I dig that it. hags hags would have. I think it's neat. But uh, but yeah, it, it fits with Tail's goal. He wants to have a library. Why wouldn't he have a book of conversations? Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I can. Go this to you guys there. That's like a full list of everything in case you want to <clears throat> go back and look at the trash. Uh, <clears throat> but that is How are you going to give me fifth level spells and not expect me to be fucking intrigued? Dirty bastard. <laughs> I'm just going through checking all these scrolls. Like. Listen, you know, I just, those were the spells that I could remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll fucking take it. Man. Anything special about the amulet? You guys things. literally asked about, like, hey, is there treasure in that inn earlier today? I was like, fuck. Um, There's a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> of course there was. Let me quickly research what hags have. Oh, just a bunch of random shit. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Like, literally, that's, like, part of, like, in Volo's guide. Like, it literally is, like, they collect stuff. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm just, like, writing stuff down. 
they're also that's like that's the best way I've heard it described. They, they collect <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and like a lot of it is like it's gross too because they're gross. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Um, so rat tails and jars of eyeballs, <laughs> bottles of piss. <laughs> it's like, all right, wow, have, have at it, guys. It's a high roller tonight. So is there anything special about those amulets, or they just? Oh, I forgot to mention. Yes, um, because I I was saving those for the end and I forgot to read them off. Uh, you also Jamie find wants a fairy costume. You you also find um, an amulet of the Justicar and an amulet of Tristiel. Uh, there's nothing like overly special about them. Um, they're just like holy symbols that a cleric or paladin would use, um, or you know maybe someone just like a really devout person would have. Um, but overall, um, they're not like a plus one magic item or anything like that. They're just holy symbols. Are they made out of any metal or wooden? Uh, they would be made out of, well, the Tristiels would be made out of silver. And um, as she is known as the Silver Lady. But uh, the Justicars would probably just be made out of various, like, I don't know, some kind of lesser valuable metal. Yeah. Alright. Well, Vilma or just if no one has a problem, take those. <clears throat> yeah. Um, take it you me. think that they were probably here um, due to the uh, information you guys found out last night about the nearby ruins being a former um, castle with like a temple in it dedicated to those two gods. Um, there are people in the know right that mm -hmm. still sometimes try and make pilgrim pilgrimages uh to these ruins um but uh you know some of them get caught up in a hag's den and murdered <laughs> okay cool i'll add this to my inventory then out of curiosity vilmar what uh what is your oath uh my oath is uh, to devotion Oath of devotion? Okay. And propane. And accessories. Pro accessories. <laughs> Damn it, you stole it from me! <laughs> I did, I did, I got it! You gotta get the, you gotta give a man a chance. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. 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 Damn it, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> what can we do to meet your energy needs? Um, you also find... You can get a quarter in my pocket. Uh, you That's also find some so propane it. accessories. Oh my gosh. No propane, just the propane accessories. Uh, a little, it's like a, a trucker cap. It says <laughs> pro dash pain, but spelled like E A I N. <laughs> propane. Propane. Oh. Any. Any hoodles. <laughs> Oh, that wonderful life of being a freaking wizard. <laughs> just so you guys know, we just got money, and I'm broke again. What? I didn't spend my money from the last one. How so what am I at, like, 400 and something? How did Hell you... yeah. It cost gold to copy spells into your spell book, sir. And time. <laughs> yeah. That would be overnight. I would assume I could do at least one of them. <laughs> huh. Well, now. You copy uh, a spell into your spell book during your rest. Um, collect your your treasures and head off uh, to towards the uh, towards the ruins in uh, in the forests outside of Reneas Alinar. Um, as you guys are traveling uh, throughout the day. Uh, you have to veer off the beaten path. Um, I shouldn't say it like that. Off during the day. Uh, it's probably a couple days later, given the size of this forest. But you know you're getting close to where this road was that led to these ruins. 
Um, <clears throat> and you know that it's overgrown. Um, so you start veering south off the road, uh, looking for these ruins. Uh, can I have y'all, or you can elect someone to make this check with advantage, uh, but I'm going to need some someone to guide the party making a survival check, uh, a survival skill check. Uh, so Mine is a two, guys, so I don't know if anyone has more than that. Go for it. Yeah, I think I have uh, what's called in it. Uh, Tails is completely absorbed with this Perfection book of conversations. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, Tails is currently um, reading a recipe for water soup. Oh, nice roll, babe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it sounds but... delicious, really. I'll show you a nice roll. I like my message. I guess I need a point refund. <laughs> you don't need a point refund, <laughs> Genie. I will put that legendary armor in a in a, in a, the next hoard that you guys find. I'm not Don't gonna feel just bad, Genie. I redeemed slap uh... down a giant <laughs> and important item for. I did a plus one to boss you know, monster attack, really and we nilly. never got it. I'll do that tonight as well. <laughs> I think you, actually that's a lie. You probably did it when uh, you slapped the shit out of Genie with that whatever it's called, Aberyth or whatever. Uh, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> but you know what? I'll do another attack with the, with the thing that you guys find tonight. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. Genie's gonna come back to everyone dead. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a recap of Genie screaming, no! <laughs> if that's what happens, Genie, just, uh, I'm gonna have to get you into a call this week just to record some screams. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> some feral just <sighs> be like, hey uh genie can you just like record yourself screaming for like half an hour that'll be next <laughs> week's episode we'll just play screaming Do you have to have a keytar <laughs> in the background too yeah it'll be screaming over some 80s an auto-tuned scream <laughs> <laughs> no Oh boy. <clears throat> uh with roll of twenty-two. Uh you find the remnants of the path leading to Elantris, as they now call it. Um and as you are traveling along, um you guys come across uh, a little dip in the path. It kind of goes down um with like a little like 10 foot high cliff sides uh around uh on the other side of the path here and um on uh the northern side of the path as you guys are on this road heading south you find a little cave uh in the in the walls there is it um, the cave of wonders though uh, is not the cave of wonders. No <laughs> crossovers yet. I'm Cavern sorry, of Time? The wonders of Cave. <laughs> uh, you guys see outside of this cave. Uh, so I right? wonder if I had rolled like a three, would we have found a porta potty or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you certainly <laughs> smell like one, quote. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, at least I took a bath in the last 23 episodes. Was that a yes, bath, in the most putrid water we could possibly have found. That is, sure, that counts as a bath, I guess. Well, should we roll to see how far behind we are, Quothe, you know, just to stay away from the smell? <laughs> Can you I get... Give, uh, yeah, you give him a wide berth. I think Tail may just be hitting him with prestidigitation, just like real There subtly. we go. Does like, it get rid of my disease? Taking it off just a little bit at a time, so he, the quote he doesn't know. Uh, prestidigitation does not get rid of your disease, no. <laughs> Perfect. A bile bath. <laughs> 
Uh, so you guys find yourselves outside of uh, this little cave here. And, you know, it's just like a normal walking through the woods, you see a cave. It happens every once in a while, right? Um, although this place immediately puts you on edge as you see some crumbling uh, stone near the sides of this cliff and at, at first you're like oh it's probably just crumbling stone but as you get closer to it you notice that in the pile of stone next to this cliff right where Quothe is standing right now Quothe you see there's a stone hand in this pile of rubble here don't you dare touch it <laughs> can you ping said hand uh yes, it was right here it's oh wow i thought it was near the boulder okay yeah there's a, there's a like a little bit of a you see like a stone hand and then as you like take notice of this you see like a stone foot in like a shoe like a like a wrapped sandal you see like a lower like part of a jaw like kind of like uh just like the left side of someone's lower jaw and like this it looks like a masterwork carving like a statue got destroyed here just but like pristine like you're like this is like the most articulated stone statue that i think anyone's ever seen like you pick up the hand like it's fine it doesn't like it doesn't radiate magic you're like a barbarian who like can sense magic and stuff it's not magical or anything uh yoro thank you for the follow <laughs> uh it doesn't radiate magic it's just like a normal stone hand but um you can even tell like looking at it the hand has like fingerprints carved in it like and that's not even like exaggerated it's like so finely carved that it, it looks just like a stone hand uh we're getting some divine sense let me double check something no i i was trying to read it again i wasn't trying to cast it ah gotcha well, but you know how they reverse you know, spells you click on the bubble and let the half don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a racial trait tea bag. Jesus Christ. <laughs> For those of what you happens know. when the bag is so small it can't touch the liquid? I didn't know it was on my skill list. I was just trying to read it. <laughs> it says <laughs> facial, not Rachel, right? <laughs> Jesus. This is yeah, this is racial. <laughs> like Thank you. something of your race. <laughs> uh, for those of you I heard <laughs> Rachel, so I was like, what? <laughs> for those of you that cannot read that on your screen, it says tea bag. Uh the description <laughs> says gently lift loin and lunge. <laughs> what could happen? Question mark. <laughs> That's on Quote's character sheet, apparently. Is that one of the feats you took? I can't. Come on. Oh. Good God. Oh, God. Just... What do I roll for that dexterity? Is it... Jeez. Yeah. Uh, yes. Well, it's yes. definitely not strength. I don't know acrobatics. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Th there's a hand in there's, a sandal. Yeah, there's, there's a hand. <laughs> um, pristinely carved, you think. And as you guys start to make your way in a little bit more, you see that all of these piles of rubble here, like this, um, like not just this one, but all of these piles of rubble, you can start to see, like, statues humanoid statues one of them has like 
part of like a face that has like an elf ear on it. Another one looks like it could have been a tiefling. Um, like all sorts of different races and stuff. Some of them look like they may have been armored. Like you see like a stone sword in like one of them. It looks like, but you you don't understand why here, right? Like there's no structures around. It's not like this is like a you know standing stone circle for like magic or you know it doesn't seem like it's like a druid circle or anything where they might have like you know statues to like former um druids or anything like that <clears throat> uh, but as you guys are exploring and kind of piecing together what all this could mean you hear something awful just like a really bad noise coming from inside this cave uh, it's like metal on metal just the squeaking and groaning of like metal on metal it gets okay i have a question were the hands made of stone on the ground yes. okay, okay yeah, gotcha. yeah. Like so these are gonna these, resurrect the, no no not necessarily not the i mean not that you think anyway but uh yeah it's all mm. like from what you guys are piecing together it's like the finest crafted statues in the world like you can see pores in the skin of these statues, right? So like, they are gonna resurrect. They're not <laughs> actually statues. They're, but they're made of stone. Like it's solid stone. Like you can it's clack, a up, clack them together. They it sounds like stone. You crush, you know, one of them with your, you know, strength. I have a, I have a question. Crumbles like a stone would. Like is in quote they like we're all seeing this was he like did he stop and start inspecting like one of these and if he did can vilmar walk up to it and and yeah at the same yeah i i assumed you guys were filtering into this area uh, okay hey, your character as necessary but be careful i've moved too far before and things went so so this well, uh cave over here i, I want to move here the top that's well, hold on one second I want to come here while we're inspecting it, and I want to do Divine Sense. Okay. So I want to... Oops, I forgot to grab my gun here. So I'll move here as we're looking at this one, and Divine Sense, which... Mm -hmm. You know, anything in 60 feet of me. Any evil presence, like last time. Fiend, undead, celestial... Really as an action, you open your senses to detect such forces of evil and good. Until the end of your next turn, you to the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of you. You might want to move uh, 20 feet closer. <laughs> not behind total I'd be, cover. be cheating if I moved. <laughs> like, that'll be right here. I would move here. Uh, like... You do not... Uh, you do not sense any, uh, do not sense anything of the sort. <laughs> so either it's in cover or it's an actual, uh, like beast I or something heard... that's not actually evil intent. I heard an alert, but I don't see anything on the activity. So, um, how it... tall is the top of this cave? Like, how thick is it? Uh... Is it, is it... You know, like almost a, a full story tall, like nine feet thick of rock up at the top, or is it you know a real thin cave? Oh, um, the uh, yeah, it's probably a nine ten feet thick. The cave opening itself is probably a good twenty feet wide and fifteen feet tall. <clears throat> Okay, that answers all my questions. Would or maybe a little smaller than that, maybe like fifteen by fifteen. You know, another thing of divine sense it says that 
within the same radius, you can detect the presence of any place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated as with the hollow spell. Any weird feelings about the grounds of these statues? Okay. No. Nope. Okay. No, I'll, they just seem very use, out of place. Can I use lingering magic then? Uh, for the only body reacts to the presence of magic. Uh, cast detect magic spell without using a spell slot. Uh, constitution. Uh, yes, and detect, uh, no magic spells or anything. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, uh -huh. you just, uh, as you guys are coming in, you're doing all this stuff, as you're kind of, like, moving in, before you start to hear the noises coming from the cave, you're just, no, no evil, no good. No consecrated or hallowed ground. It doesn't look like this is the work of like a magic spell. Like no wizard came through here and like erected statues and then broke them with magic or anything like that. Um, you're just seeing like literally the remnants of statues that could be in the finest museums in the world or erected on the like richest temples like these are literally like if they were whole statues you would honestly just think that they were living people made out of rock like it's can i that, sneak to the entrance it's like that like detailed and finely crafted of stonework and uh yeah roll stealth you can try and sneak up there Mm. Sorry, it closed my thing. Why am I blind? There it is. <clears throat> Where's my dice? <laughs> Sorry guys, the cat just got sick everywhere. Oof. He was probably sick because it wasn't getting enough loving. Needs more no. cuddle. He, we Thing changed food and he's just our children. having some problems. So, Singretti, DM to DM. Mm -hmm. How do you normally do this? When someone wants to sneak, are they setting a DC that you roll perception against? Or is the perception roll the DC that you roll stealth against? Um, well, since uh, as the DM you're, you're omnipotent, the way that I look at it is I know what is there and I determine how alert that creature would normally be and then set my DC from it. So say there's like a bunch of bandits in a bar in a corner and you're mm -hmm. trying to sneak up to them, I'd set a DC probably pretty low because they're getting drunk at like 15 or something. Right. Um, and then as long as you beat 15, you're fucking invisible to them. Okay. In that case, both of you're a lucky son of a bitch because I also rolled a 16. <laughs> but if we go with Sangretti's logic, I'm the one setting the DC. So you match that DC and you sneak up to the cave entrance undetected. Okay, I'd like to lay a hunting trap. Okay. A good idea. Let me know if you want me to alert whatever's here, guys, because I can do that real easy. Also, oh, you making know, it might be a friend. Might be screen. friendly. I can't ping. Let me lay I'm a sorry. hunting trap down here. It might be friendly. <laughs> it could be well, friendly. you know, you got to cover all your bases. I can't ping. I don't know why. I'm sorry. Uh, just click and hold. <laughs> yeah, was, I mean. Okay. I was just just reading chat like Rachel's like in our chat talking with the audience saying we're about to meet Medusa. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm getting that vibe. That's what I'm getting. I'm or a basilisk. I don't yeah, I think it's a basilisk. Uh, we're 
about to find out. Quothe, as you sneak up uh, to the to the cave entrance, you hear, like I said, uh, you hear like the loud yawning of creaking metal. Just like obviously, it's like noises that I can't even make with my mouth, like in my. But you know that. Have you ever been? Like just ask Joe, but just near those up. giant, <laughs> giant <laughs> like power. Where's the Ben K? Uh, those like <laughs> giant metal towers that like hold up power cables and stuff. Um, like and when they like wave in the wind, they make that like creaking noise. It's like that, but like louder and also more acute. Like it doesn't. It doesn't have that sort of low tone because of how big that structure is. It's a little higher of a tone. Um, but you hear movement inside the cave, and it's getting louder as if it's coming towards you. Now, how far... I mean, can we see so many feet into the cave? Or, I mean... Um, yeah, there's some light uh, kind of trickling in. Not too much, though. Um the way that this is oriented uh you're a little bit later into the day so the sun is to the west of this cave it's coming out over here so the shadows are being cast like this way um but you can see like it's like dark about 15 feet in um you and you, did you say he can start seeing this is that what i heard or Quoth can start seeing it or the oh, outline, can, outline of it? He can hear. Oh, hear it. He can hear it. Oh, okay. The little the hunting grab a little bear trap there. The, the minute it, he can, we can start seeing it, I want a divine sense again. Okay, uh, so do we do something flashy to get it out or uh, should I just throw a jab one in there? Throw a torch. I got a torch. You're gonna probably throw it into the dark. He's gonna probably make you roll at disadvantage. So we'll have a torch too. Yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily do bad. You yeah, a torch. Yeah. Light up. But I mean, we do have a spellcaster that can literally just throw a fireball in there. I I would I not like that option. <laughs> <at the darkness. laughs> um, third level spells are very expensive. I do not get lots of them. <laughs> okay, I'm throwing a torch in there. If you want an alert, I can do that. I can get them to come out of whatever's at. Well, I was just thinking a little damage on top of it instead of me throwing a... Is your alert going to cost it. you a, a, a spell slot? Nope. Oh, okay. We good? Do you alert, want me to alert them? His alert is, I cast Thaumaturgy and make my voice really loud. And I say, hey, in your mom's your mom smells like elderberries. <laughs> neener, neener, neener. <laughs> nope. <laughs> that's fun, but that's not what I was planning on at all. <laughs> well, why don't we have um, throw, throw a torch in there? Because he suggested I mean, it. He's already he's up right there. there. He's yeah, right he's there. Do okay. it. Okay. Torch away. Do I need to do any type of specialness? Nah, to... uh, oh. yeah, just remove one torch from your inventory. Uh, as Done. you light and throw a torch into the cave, you hear the sound of a log kind of clink and clatter into uh into the cave and then it's a hay golem uh it's a it's a hay it burns it's a hay golem <laughs> we won the day some somehow <laughs> sounds like metal but it's, 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 it's just a golem made of straw and you burn it alive um <laughs> no unfortunately for you uh both fortunately because this is part of your plan but also unfortunately um you do alert the thing in the cave, you hear, not only do you hear the, you know, familiar sounds of metal on metal, um, you also hear, um, <laughs> you're, not getting, you're, you're not moving, you're not moving out of this one, bud. Well, he could have said, he, he might have thrown the torch and ran. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't say, he didn't he say that the, shit. He didn't he say that he threw the torch and ran. Just say, get behind Bill Barr. The he, 
he just didn't want to interrupt you. That's all. I, I just, he... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, Chad, prepare to get punished. That's what that is. <laughs> that's, that's, that's... I he mean, wanted to be up front. He said throw the rage. torch like three times. <laughs> never said running. Uh, I am going to use you guys to roll for initiative. Also, Reshi and Tail, please put yourselves like where you would be on no. the map when this happens. <laughs> um. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, Quotha, you hear the sounds of metal on metal squeaking and groaning as you hear something that you've probably heard before. I think a lot of people would have heard before just living in this world. Um, if you guys, I don't know how many of you out there have just been around livestock in general horses cattle that kind of stuff but uh sure a lot of times they will um snort like they'll do like a sharp exhale throughout through their nose um bulls uh for example like to do this uh when they're uh, in a minotaur agitated mm-hmm. um you hear scraping of metal against rock and you hear loud snorting as a thunderous noise of hooves uh, starts galloping towards you. Um, oh my. And as you roll for initiative, uh, you see what is... I'm pretty sure I'm going first. Uh, oh shit, it rolled really fucking high too. Okay. Uh, you still you still beat it out, not by much. I think. Why did that? Can't happen? sleep. Put me to sleep so I don't feel the pain. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Didn't put it on. I mean, I can see a 20. It did roll as high as yeah, it possibly no. can. I had it selected, I'll but it did take my first initiative, which was 7. Take your first initiative, which was 7? Yes. No, 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 no. You, this is good. You want to be a 20. You want to be a 20. I'm trying to trust you on this one. It doesn't really change things a whole much. It'll I change don't... the turn order so that you're not following Vilmar. Instead, Vilmar's following you. Well, when your buff wizard gets to go first, you generally turn into a pretty strong creature. Are we having uh, Janaeus Rowan roll also since he's kind of here? Tails takes up magic Viagra services in town. A zero about that but uh he rolls a he rolled a 20 as well it was a good roll tonight which is actually very terrifying uh, don't worry. <laughs> those will be my good rolls and then i'll fuck it up uh but uh yeah you um tail you can't quite see this because it hasn't made its turn on the initiative. You guys aren't surprised because you were, you know, purposefully alert. Uh, excuse me, alerting uh, this thing. Uh, we'll put on some some battle music here. But uh, if there is a preparatory spell or something that you want to do, Tail, uh, it is your turn. I would actually like to cast two different spells, but I can only cast one of them because oh. they're both concentration. <laughs> I would yeah. like to cast haste right. on the Reshi. Let's do it. And then I would like to get behind the rock. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, tail. Mm-hmm. If I make a role that you think I should do otherwise or a decision, just let me know because remember, we're working on this. Sure, Since I guess. Since you cast haste. Oops. I'll take uh, any kind of 
you know, like supplemental advice here. Well, um, now you have another attack. So basically you can make two sword attacks and then two more sword attacks. And then with your bonus action, make two unarmed attacks. So we're feeling like two swords are the way to go? Well, if you want to use a sword or you can punch them, it's up to you. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to read between the lines here. Seems really quiet to me. What seems quiet to you? Her in Discord. She's got good volume. I Are moved my mic. Is that better? Me. Sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is it for my turn. We can move on to the rushy. Uh, keep in mind, you currently have a movement speed of 80, and you have plus two to your armor class. Easton the thing hasn't up. moved out yet, though. Put a little lightning bolt on you so you know you're hasted. At least you uh, prep something. The thing hasn't. So what right. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so what I'm going to do is move behind the rock. I'm going to do it right now so you can see it. Because I have an idea of what we're about to face. I'm going to stand behind here. Okay, okay. Hopefully that's a good space. And then wait and see what happens. Gotcha. All right. Uh, you want to like prepare an action or anything like that, like your breath attack or something? I'll prepare breath in case it okay. faces at me, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna charge the person that woke it up. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure because like the way held actions and yeah, stuff you have to work say is it, like right. if you don't declare it, I can't. Yeah. It doesn't exist, right? Exactly. Those damn yeah, rules, I appreciate right? that. <laughs> Uh, is us Reshi's turn? Uh, Rowan uh, is going to. Let me just double check his spells real quick. Okay. It's for. Um. Is the ring sixty foot ring? Uh, all right. Uh, he can reach from where he is. He can reach the the cave entrance. Uh, Ron's gonna prepare. Um. Um. Uh, oh wait, sorry, I clicked the wrong. Uh, Ron's gonna move closer, but he's going to prepare uh, a casting of Bane. <clears throat> but he's gonna have to move up to like here in order to do that. Uh, <clears throat> which brings us to. As you hear the thundering stampede of hoof noises creaking metal and bull snorts he shall reveal upon the map the gorgon this is for those of you uh who know more about actual like lore and stuff uh, you may think to yourself, oh, Gorgon, that's like what a Medusa is. Well, this is like an actual D&D &D monster, which is a bull-like animal made out of steel. <laughs> uh, you see green, like, pale green wisps of smoke kind of coming out of its nostrils as it charges at you, uh, both a... Okay, did it uh, step on my... I'm going to find out right now. Uh, it <laughs> does indeed step <laughs> into your trap. It'll take uh, 1d4, 3 uh, piercing damage uh, from that. However, it does get within range of you to be able to Does attack it... you hunting traps don't provide any speed penalties or anything um it says uh i'm fishing <laughs> 13, purely 6, fishing 47. 
Mm -hmm. um, and stop moving, but where it is is already like right next to you. Well, it was charging me for a second, yeah, so was I was starting. a little worried about that. It also says, uh, until the creature breaks through the trap, its movement is limited by the length of the chain, which is typically three feet long. So it would step into your trap, continue moving with its momentum, and then get, you know, stop short three feet, you know, from where you affix the chain. Um, but since <laughs> you threw the torch down there and everything... I'm going to rule that he at least gets this attack off on you before you step out. Because who knows? Yes. I could roll like shit for the rest of the night, and he may never break free, and everyone could stay at range. <laughs> Can I use my polarum attack for him coming into range? Uh, That you can, yes. You or can, can I just attach the chain to Vilmar as my action? Um, we'll put him <laughs> we'll back here if you want to... <laughs> Make this gives me very sift, just in case I die, pull my corpse away vibes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, subtract two from that. Uh, subtracting two from that, you do not hit the Gorgon. Oh, wow. Um, Too bad I didn't use my Bardic. So that would be... He actually does get to move in. He does step on the trap. He does get to attack you since you're within his uh, range. Okay, I'm um, going to use, uh, well, let's see if he hits first. Uh, Gorgon, if the Gorgon moves at least 20 feet straight towards a creature and then hits it with a gore attack on the same turn, that target must make a, a succeed on a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. If the target is knocked prone, uh, the Gorgon can make one attack with its hooves against the creature as a bonus action. So I need you to make a strength saving throw and you're trying to hit a 16 or higher Jeez. but i did stop his momentum so does that not matter again he gets to a square adjacent to you so the rules of the game that okay. doesn't matter he stopped him he can't go past and get behind you but yeah. he's gonna hit you okay i'm sorry you said strength yes strength dc 16 okay so you are not knocked down uh, he is going to gore you, which is a really strong attack because we're making our way to the higher so that's kind even of creatures. To my uh, AC. So it hits your AC at a 16. I remember you just have to match uh, the AC to hit. Uh, so he's going to gore you for a shit ton of damage, probably. So can I, I use roll. my uh, Stone's Endurance then? Uh. Because last time I went to use it, you stones. said, let's see if he hits first. So I'm just trying to follow that same thought process. Let me look at Stones and Dirt. Focus the cell to occasionally shrug off injury. When you take damage, you can use your reaction to roll a d12. Add and I already used my reaction. Uh, to the number roll. Yeah, you already used it to attack him coming in. Uh, so, no. <laughs> you can't use it. Uh, but Genie will... Do you... Okay, since you're the one getting attacked, Quothe, would you rather, um, before I roll damage, do you want Genie to cast Bane on this thing? Or do you want him to use Bardic Inspiration to cutting words and reduce his the incoming damage? So I could completely shrug off the attack or i can lower the damage of the attack well potential oh yeah because you'd have to roll the uh, D. if he well he had to make it he would have to make a save and if he fails his save against bane okay let's bane it though bane it all right so bane it Ron will use bane I will be right back. Um, I smell popcorn, so I'm either having a stroke or someone's making popcorn <laughs> next door. I want popcorn. Can you have a... This is a scary-ass person to fight, Jeff. It is. Right. Listen, it's I almost only... I just a... like it more than bugbears. First, first off... First off... The, the book only says it's a CR 
five creature. So just throwing that out there. No, I mean I think you're being fair, absolutely. I'm just like scared to death. You know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I get rid of this thing? Um Yeah, it's zero five. It's just fifth level things jack up and difficulty. a little bit beefier, right, yeah. Yeah. Um let's a charisma save to make. Uh does not have good charisma. He rolls yes. a zero, so he does that <clears throat> just for funsies, rolls the D four minus two. The attack misses uh misses you completely. Uh, Respectfully a, uh, suck it, Gordon. Pink dot on there. So I remember Can I use name. my bonus actions bonus action to do something? <laughs> what? No. Is that a thing? No, it's not a thing. <laughs> no, 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 it is not. Can I use my imaginary key and just beat this guy? <laughs> mm, let me think about that. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Homebrew says no. <laughs> that will be. <laughs> no soup for you. Uh, Magic Eight Ball says try again. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> is the turn order off for you guys too? No, it's on for me. No, oh, yeah, you're on deck. Yeah, you should be up now. Oh, I got you. Okay. Now would be a great time to raid. Yeah, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I let's, like uh, to rage. let's jump into rage mode here. And uh, let's do some rolls. I regret standing this close to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, this, rage this time. Not super intelligent, so you know, let's be either a bit good or bad. <laughs> uh, oh, you meant the character. I thought you meant Chad. I'm oh, sorry. No, I mean that's <laughs> always the same thing. What the hell's wrong with you? No, not you. Why didn't it roll it? Why did it just give me the? Uh, you didn't do wild search. Oh, uh, I'm an idiot. Here we go. What do we got? Uh, number six. It's a new uh, one. Arcane energy taps into the minds of those Fuck around that. you. Each creature within 30 feet of you must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Or you see a glimpse into the creature's thoughts, learning how it plans to attack you. As a result, the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the start of your next turn. Okay, uh... Do I get to also see if Vilmar and Reshi don't save? Do I get to see into their thoughts about how they're going to attack me in the future? It says each creature. <laughs> well, you already know. It's in your sleep. You're going to lose. <laughs> <your sleep. laughs> gonna I see death in sleep. <laughs> Is Vilmar within 30 feet of you? No. Oh, yeah, he, well, exactly yeah. Within yeah. 30 yeah. feet. Why is... But I'm behind a rock. Does that count? Is it line of sight? Nope, it's just each creature within oh. 30 feet of you. Fuck. <laughs> the cat's Man. planning to kill me and survived by five feet to let me know. <laughs> yep, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> it's behind the rock. <laughs> so we have to roll a uh, saving cat, throw? You don't even... Yeah, wisdom saving throw. Rushing and... Terrible wisdom. Uh, oh, yeah. you, sh <laughs> you shouldn't as a monk. That's one it of the things... Two. That you... I have a two. Jesus Christ, my rolls are horrible. Oh, you know, you should maybe fix that when you level up. <laughs> uh, 12 it's and 8. I do believe that is less than, I think, what, it's like a 13 DC or something like mm -hmm. that. 8 plus proficiency plus constitution. What's your constitution modifier, Rote? Uh, My constitution modifier. I'm sorry. Um, It is 6. Yeah, what? that's yeah. That's your saving throw, so three. Oh, sorry. Uh, fourteen. Three. You have to beat a fourteen. All right. Uh, wisdom fifteen. Ha ha. The one thing that need, ha -ha. you needed to actually know about passes your fourteen. Uh, Mister Falsham. What? What did I do? Well, we all die. Eight it plus, is banned. 
Oh, right. I forgot that was saving throws as well. Oh, that uh, means. Minus one uh, is a 14, so I think I still... It's still... Yeah, you still pass, but I'm... <laughs> Hey, I'll take what I can get. Hey, uh, no, I... yeah. <laughs> Keep me on point, you guys. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, Gorgon somehow suffers through your psychic barrage trying to see in its, uh, into its mind. Although, you're pretty well sure that this thing wants to gore you mm. with its horns and trample you with its hooves, as that is what it's already tried to do to you. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Coming in with the, uh, the two scythe attacks. Only one hits. Uh, yeah, only the one hits. The 15 does not hit. Uh, two range, six slashing with a six necrotic. Coming in for 14 Jeez. points of damage. What would it have been? Let's look. What would it have been? Drawn first blood. <laughs> Oh well. Okay, I'm going to move. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jeff's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeff was just like, oh, free attacks? Okay, I'll take sure, them. Yeah, yeah. Don't That's go near fine. me, that dude's gonna fuck me up. I'm not the tank here. Uh, you guys kind of are. I think he's referring to me. You are pretty beefy. You can go punch that thing. I agree with that, by the way. Why does everything have an opportunity attack in this game? (laughs) Because that's how the game works. Well, I don't got to worry about it, do I? Because he's chained? Mm, It's worth a try again. (laughs) Within three feet of you. This damn hunting trap is a big disappointment right now. (laughs) Listen, once books. you get away from him, it'll be fine. Unless I make my strength save at the beginning of my next turn and break free, which is totally possible. In which case, it was good effort. Damn it, I forgot my count. It's okay, I've got 20,000 points in the channel now. I can revive you when you die. <laughs> That's a great time, Twitch, to let me know that. that. That's what? a great thing. Did Twitch is even trying to help us right now? <laughs> Redeem this soon. <laughs> I've got some mad points up here. Is it my turn? I'm sorry if I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I gotta get attacked again. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Rashes his his head to try and gore you. Uh, twenty five minus a d four. To be fair. Which isn't going to matter. Which isn't going to matter. Nope. But he does gore Unless you, you got like three of those. <laughs> he does gore you for 13 piercing damage. Jeez, are you still alive? <laughs> nope, I'm dead. <laughs> if no. both they only had 13 HP, that would be <laughs> bad. <laughs> how, are you, how are you down already? I'm not. Just oh, joking. okay. Jesus. I'm like, that should have changed my whole strategy if you are. <laughs> 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 my strategy was quote a meat tank <laughs> his uh, wife is in the game he's gonna say a bunch of stuff Vilmar it is your turn you see uh, that sweet sweet quote a ass getting a big horn right up in it <laughs> um, as he runs away you okay. do see uh... you just see it one split second as uh, Quothe gets a horn in the ass. He's like, do I actually want to leave? And then he's like, yeah, I probably should. <laughs> okay, the first thing I'm going to do is read a scroll of haste that Tail gave me to oh, cast hey, haste, haste on me. Uh, which will double my AC, right? As plus two to my AC. Note to self, that means you can let a double heal me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the, then I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on me to give me another plus two to AC. Uh, well, they're both concentrations. Yeah, so it's A or B there. Yeah. Oh, I Go have to. Haste. Haste. Well, you know, haste is a concentration. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's good. Uh, oh. The basic principle requires, but you don't need to have known the spell to cast it with a scroll. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Then, um, you don't need to know the spell, it also doesn't cost you a spell slot, but you 
everything else is as if you were casting it. Casting it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that changes that then. All right, then. Since that is, let's see, this is not. I don't think this is a content. Uh, this is a bonus action. Okay, so let's see if I can cast this before. I'm going to. So I can move. I can cast Healing Word before I move to go to attack him, right? You could uh, cast it after if you wanted to. It's true. I could do that too. All right. All right. Then I will step up. Uh, well, using a scroll is an action. So you've already used your action to use the scroll. Mm. Yes, but it also says is that I can use another action as long as it's an attack. Action can be used oh, only right. to take attack. Duh. Sorry. Mind fart. No problem. Brain I just want to make sure I'm not doing something you know, I'm misreading. Yeah, it was just like you said scroll, and then you were like spell, and then you were also like attack, and I was like, wait a minute. They're on a normal yeah, seems... round that doesn't compute. Right. Well, that's why I'm doing the spell first, so I get that action back. Right. For this round. Gotcha. So, and I'm going to move up to him, which takes my movement. I I'll use the also... attack. I may also be reading things as you were talking, and my <laughs> brain doesn't absorb everything. No problem. Alright, so... So basically, I can't cast any other concentration spells since I have haste on me now, right? Correct. Welcome to my well, life. <laughs> you could. You could. You're just, just, you just going to collapse in a heap for a round and not be able to do anything. <laughs> Yeah. But you could. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of D&D. You can do a lot of things that just consequences for your actions. But it just takes away my smite, my faith, shield of face and stuff. That's just fine. All right. Um... Smite is not a concentration, is it? Oh, well, thunder, thunder smite would be, thunder right? Smite is thunder smite is, but divine smite's not. So I can still do divine smite. So yeah, that's you can why still I still like... tack on some divine smites. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's do let's do the attack here real quick. Do my long sword. That ain't gonna hit. Twelve does not connect. Now, do I get to do the double swing, or that's? Um, let me. That's that's a little gonna be a little confusing. So it says I can make another attack, but since I'm five, I get two attacks, so... Well, we know his AC is oh, somewhere between 16 those. and 20. Yeah, see if we can check on that. No, I guess that technically it'd be between 17 and 20. Yeah. Damn it. So, I need the specific wording. Dale, do you have that on your character sheet? What, uh, specific wording of haste? Uh, choose a willing creature you can see within range until the spell ends. The target's speed is doubled, gains a bonus so plus two to AC. Action can be used to only take the attack, dash, disengage, hide, or use an object action. But in parentheses, it says attack. One weapon attack only. So it does not yeah, give you. You can't cast a spell. Uh, so yeah, one weapon attack only. So I think that precludes extra attack. Run away. So will I be able to do the four attacks next round? Uh, do you have an extra attack on your character? Yeah, I'm level five fighter. I can do two attacks on your next turn. Three. Because you would make your your normal attack action, which is to make an attack. Extra attack gives you plus one attack when you take the attack action. And then haste gives you one extra weapon attack for, for three. The reason Reshi can do more is because she can use key, yeah, or she Kai, key. or quintessence, or whatever you want to call it. Quintessence. Key. Okay. That's actually the word for it, it's quintessence. Okay. All right, so that's that. And then, okay, so I did my attack, did my movements, and then I will cast healing word. Should I do level? How how bad are you? 
Chad? I'm only down 13. 13? So I could probably take two, three more hits from him. He's got the same HP that I do right now. Like, naturally, he's at my level. Okay, so I will... I'll cast Healing Word at level 2. He's on my level 2 spots for you. First Healing Word. Second level. Jesus Christ, my... Fucking rolls are horrible. So that's what? F five? Are we in there? It's better than nothing, uh, yep, right? Yep, that is five. Five. So, five HP. Thank you, bro. Note to self, just use potions. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Well, it could have been eight if it... <laughs> rolls aren't horrible. We're gonna have one of those nights, I think. I might have to get my, my actual dice out. <laughs> I'm starting to see why a friend of mine only ever uses healing word at level one to bring people back from the brink of death. <laughs> yeah, it, it generally isn't worth the extra slot up. <clears throat> um, yeah, it looks like Vilmar's turn. Yep. Tail. All right, uh, DM, I'm going to make things really difficult. Better, because I'm going to maybe do things that will make you all cry here in a second. Okay, so I want to cast Fireball. Uh -huh. okay. However, I want to use my Awakened Spellbook to make it thunder damage, so it's a pressure wave. Okay. I want to cast it where it hits between the Gorgon and the roof of the cave to collapse the cave on top of the Gorgon while hitting the Gorgon with the Thunder Wave. Okay. Oh. Hey. Either shut off or difficult. his cam shut off. I can't tell. You better hit. You better hit. Um, what? <laughs> I'm still here. Yeah. No, I was talking about the DM. Oh, yeah. explained all that. <laughs> yep. Um... Uh, so yeah, let's let's give that a shot. Um, it needs to make a dexterity save. He did say he's casting at level ten too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish I could upcast fireball. I just can't cast any stronger than third level spells at this point in time. I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. I told you it was going to be a difficult turn. If all else fails, I have that new skill I took at level 5. Alright, cool. Um, make a dexterity... Saving uh, thingy, dexterity, 16, you do that. It only takes half damage. Uh, you cast it right above him. It's a 20-foot radius, which means... Uh, oh, between him and the roof of the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, above him, between him and the roof. It still is going to hit Vilmar. So Vilmar no. still has to make a dexterity save. <laughs> He's not 20 feet away from right above the Gorgon. <laughs> Only 10 feet away. Yeah, yeah, that's 10 feet. That's my Holy fault. Holy shit, that's yeah. a lot. Could be out here. He needs to make it. Uh, dexterity, you said? Dexterity. Mm -hmm. You have haste. You have advantage on dexterity saving throws. Oh, thank you for reminding me. 14. And it helped. Just enough. You take Just enough. half damage. So uh, 11 thunder damage. The Gorgon, however, is going to take 11 thunder damage. Plus, luckily, there is already a trap. To do just this in the game the collapsing roof trap 
which does 4d10 bludgeoning damage. So we're going to roll 4d10. Oh, shit. One, two, yeah. two, and six. Yeah, take what I can get. I mean, it's basically like he just didn't make his deck save. Basically, yeah. He'll, he'll take uh, 22 full, uh, full on damage there. Uh, you blast it apart. Apparently, this uh, this cave is made out of something like granite. <laughs> uh, not shale. Uh, big chunks of rock fall down, hit him on the hind quarters. Uh, they kind of fall behind him and to the sides of him in the cave. Uh, but not enough to like, you know, no collapsing. Like, ah, now you're buried in a cave-in kind of thing. No, I, I was just uh, trying to use the rocks as extra damage. No, not yeah, as a for sure. bury him thing. For sure. Um, so, um, we could cool. probably, with these rolls, I think he's down in four turns. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> you mean Vilma, right? <laughs> yeah, not us. I mean, not him. Uh, you guys yeah, that, that dropped me from 50 to 39, so... <laughs> I think he's. I think it's sitting somewhere between 70 and 75 HP is my best guess. Sorry about that, Vilma. I kind of forgot you were in range. It's all right. It was cool, though. I'll have a stern <laughs> talking know, to your tail. All you did is help his pacemaker out. <laughs> <laughs> Jump started him. I mean that. Uh, that is why really cast nice. haste when you can cast lightning on Vilmar? Reshi, it is your turn. I don't want to be any part of this fight. I don't like it. Come on, you're <sighs> you're a DPS machine. You're the one here to finish us off. You are beef am supreme. I, I you that? can go beat the dog shit out of this thing. If you're next you to can me, also it... turn me to stone. Yes, but he has disadvantage if you're standing right next to me when he attacks you. Remember, you run okay. up there, you get, you make your attack action where you can take two normal attacks. Then you can use your key to point one point of key to make flurry of blows, which is another two unarmed strikes. Then you get that haste attack, which is technically the attack action where you can only make one normal attack, but you can still do another key on top of that, which brings you up to a total of seven unarmed strikes. If you use two key, I think yeah, you can, the only problem I think is, that's is you gotta get through sound. its AC. Yeah, I have that to is roll the exactly. Point. I have to roll correctly. Yeah, but that thing is, she has so many chances to do it that hopefully some of it will. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going in. I'm going in. That I'm is if do... you decide to use two points of key to flurry twice. No, I, I think at the moment I have we five, only have so. like a 20% hit rate on this or thing. Or wait, can you flurry twice? Is flurry a bonus action? I've hazed that. It's though. a bonus action. Yeah, flurry is a bonus action. You cannot so do seven she, attack. So she can do one, so two, you can only three, she can do five, four, though. five. Yeah, yeah, she can do five. Five attacks. Sorry about that. I thought five no, is still really good. Stuff. Also, you really could good. instead of yeah. instead of spending that point on another uh, flurry of blows, instead you can spend that point on patient defense, and then you're dodgy as fuck, so they can't hit you anyway. That's also. I mean, you could do both. You can spend more than one key. I can knock yeah. him prone though, right? With my uh, my new thing. Absolutely can. And it will try. Yeah. And and you're if you're right next to me. I have I can make him roll uh, disadvantage on any attack rolls he attacks you with. Uh huh. Because of my okay. fighting style of protection. Also, that is also I'm going true. in, going in. You're going fairly in. safe in close combat with our particular crew. <laughs> If you turn me to stone, y'all, I'm gonna come after you guys. I'll heal you. <laughs> I don't like that joke. <laughs> not gonna hit. Not gonna also hit. Also not gonna hit. There's my key. Hey, that That's one gonna hit. hit. That one hit. Okay. Now we know his AC then. It's either 19 or 20. That one's oh. going to hit. If a 19 go. hits, it's at least a 19. <laughs> that one's going to hit. A 19 wouldn't hit. Well, I meant it was a 19 or 20. And then she got a uh, nat 20 on her second or uh, last Yeah, one. she did. On our last yeah. one there, she got nat 20. Oh. So, Damn, plus 7. Really, That's a powerful attack. It is. It's just unfortunate. I have 
you roll then a, I can a spend another six. key, right, to knock him prone? You don't have to spend key. When you are away of the open palm. That's just yeah. something that you do when you spend your key. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a so strength save or dexterity? That's right, Sam. Tell me about that. Okay, what is that one? Strength or dexterity? That's for him. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I'm looking it up right now. You won't. Yeah. So, the uh, Gorgon dexterity. has to make a dexterity save. Right. The Gorgon does. Okay. Dexterity for being knocked prone. Nineteen. Oof. I don't think he is knocked prone. Nope. Mine sixteen. Fuck. I tried. Wait. Do you add the modifier to it? What about I Bane? Disadvantage. Yeah, because it has Bane, so it could be a D4 uh, here. It could fail. Yeah, yeah. Minus two. It, it's still 17. Two. Yeah, it still doesn't hit. I don't think so, her but... DC is a 15. So. Hmm. Well, it's a saving throw on the base or the base plus the bonus. Wait, what? It, it's just, uh, just a D4. That's... Okay. <laughs> Galit did some damage, but he's still going to turn me to stone, so you guys better be up for that. Uh, Genie. He can try. <laughs> Rowan's turn. Uh. Arm person won't work. How much damage did I do, though, on that one? Uh, 30 let's see. points of damage. Okay. Yeah, he did a good chunk. Yeah, yeah. I'm just oh trying to keep gosh. up. Okay. You brought him down below half that. HP. Like. I mean, I did what I wanted to do. I guess. Yeah. Um. We're gonna. I don't know what Rowan would do in this moment when he's feeling like himself. Uh, but maybe you know he took some bad. Arcanite powder, uh, he's gonna actually attack something with chill touch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he comes in with 24 to hit, which hits and does nine necrotic to the Gorgon. I'm uh, pretty sure he would have formed sexual Voltron, to be honest. Well, with don't you, forget, he's trying to impress probably. our new uh, Belmar guy. So he probably would have done this. He would have yeah, jumped he in there screams, with a the dagger. He screams, I'm the greatest warrior! And uh, <laughs> just cast Chill Touch. Uh, he summons a, a cold skeletal finger, uh, puts it up the Gorgon's butthole. It takes nine <laughs> necrotic <laughs> damage. <laughs> uh, it takes nine necrotic damage to its butthole. And now it's the Gorgon's turn. Does uh, Genie now know if the Gorgon has a healthy prostate? <laughs> Uh, he does well, no, if he turns it to stone. Maybe his finger wasn't long enough. Uh, <laughs> Gorgon is going uh, to try and break free of the... Uh, wait, is that an action to break free? Here, wait, yes, second. the only action you have. That's what I did. I, look it I up, made I know. it waste its actions on uh, the pain in its foot. Oof. Yeah, it's, it's done now. Can't do anything Flanges. else. Flanges. But... Does have to make. Uh, it doesn't try and break free quite yet because there's people right next to him. Uh, he is going to snort some hellfire gas. You know, he's no. gonna, that green fuming gas in a thirty foot cone, which is going to hit both Vilmar and Reshi. I'm going to need you guys to make constitution saving throws. <laughs> Rashi has none fucks given on that one. So I have a question. I have three proficiency bonuses and Rashi only has two. Should she have three as well? Uh, uh, no, it's dependent all on character background. Character and, base. And yeah. I gotcha, I gotcha. There's a lot to it. Because I've got, like, nine proficiencies. But I mean bonuses, like check marks on your... It's all about what you... Uh, yeah, it's, it's all about your character. There's there's a okay. lot to it. Did I fail? I'm really so bad. She has four trains. 
that what you're talking about? Uh, don't worry about it. We'll explain it later. <laughs> so, uh, Vilmar... I'm sure Quothe shouldn't have three saving throw proficiencies unless you took... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's why I just noticed the diff discrepancy there, so I wanted to fix it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you only have... Yeah, you didn't take resilient feet, so... Pretty sure you don't have dexterity uh, as a barbarian. Okay. Uh, but uh, you both pass. Oh, yes. thank God. Bastards. You both pass. You did do not get turned to stone this round. Uh, but that is his action, and that is his turn. Both it. Okay. God, why does it keep doing that to me? I'm sorry. Also, by the way, Velmar, we have a range of effect if he rages. Okay, so I'm going to need to rage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Off and on, I'm going to toggle it. <laughs> okay. That is your rages used for the day, because you're pretty sure you only get two? I get three. Oh, Ooh. fancy boy. Toggle like a light switch, boy. Uh, that is a two. You can teleport up to 20 feet. It's an unoccupied okay. space that you can see until your rage ends. Can I see you past his big ass and get behind him? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, let's roll that beautiful damage footage. <laughs> um, he has Bane, so I roll at advantage, and I'm behind him, and nope. he doesn't know, right? You do not roll at advantage. Even though I teleport behind him and he doesn't know where I'm at? Well. We are not playing with flanking rules, so no. Okay, and you've done in the past. That's the only reason support. I brought it up. Okay, let's uh, I do... I don't think we have. Yeah, it's because have. I was near him. It was because I was near him. Well, there was one time the DM face. said he teleports and doesn't know where he's at, and he teleports right behind him and roll advantage on it. So I just remember the tagline from saying it. That okay, let's uh, the, I don't know. heat of the moment that. DM rules. <laughs> okay, let's fire up these uh, normal swings. Did I do it at? No, I did normal. Okay, good. That may have been um, a moment where you guys were on the outs, and I was trying to be nice to you. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Uh, twenty-two hits, and nine does not hit to slice up his hind quarters. Okay, let's see what we get for that 22. Come on, baby. Not bad. Not bad. 11, 15, 14 damage. I could have only done four more damage. Four more wouldn't have killed him, so. Nope, but it's <laughs> close. He's getting down there. It's definitely... Like I said, nothing to worry about, you guys. Not his best day, that's for sure. <laughs> Vilmar. Um, I will be surprised if he makes it to another turn. All right, let's just do attacks. Especially if you do two attempts. Well, if you just go straight attacks, like you don't do any spell fuckery, like you still have haste and you can still do that haste attack, so you'd get three attacks. Get yep. it, Billy. Yeah. Well, and I can die, divine smite on each one of those two if I want. It's very true. This is, this is burst damage at its <laughs> finest, folks. 26 will hit! Alright. And then I will Divine Smite on that one. Oops. God damn it. Where the hell is it? I keep losing it. Well, there's the damage for that. 17 damage. He is on a, literally like a... Jeez. Okay, plus 12. I was going to say that he was on a Dick's Whisper to being dead, but that... 12 damage. How do you want to do this, bud? Jesus. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, let's see. After Rushy gets done punching the shit out of him, Vilmar comes up, chops off one horn, chops off the other, and then steps aside and just cuts his head right off. Swipe that off. Sweat that snows right off. And then I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and then... <laughs> well, damn. Do you see what I added to it, though? Uh, yeah. Yes. A one d eight. A one d eight. Just a six inches. Rowan... Yeah, I didn't really hate. <laughs> Rowan isn't doing this. You should change that to a d four, bud. Oof. Oh. Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Get wrecked, hey. as they say. <laughs> At least he was generous and didn't say D3. <laughs> I'm please, gonna do a 3D100. Please put a 1D negative 12 on there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, a loud planking of metal falling to the ground as you uh, reverberates through the forest as the head of the uh, Gorgon falls away from its body and hits the ground as you slice its head off. An unfortunate moment for this creature. <laughs> you know, it was just trying to live its life just out here. Eaten passers by, you know, as you do. It's, uh, you know, um, your divine sense and stuff doesn't do anything on this because he's an unaligned monstrosity. Right. He's not evil. He's just going about his day. And you come up here into his house and murder him? I don't know. Well, he killed all these probably innocent maybe people around the. So do we, we got steak dinners um, incoming? Yeah, but like... Yeah, metal <laughs> steak dinners. Uh, no, this thing is like made out of metal, so unless you I mean, eat... Unless you're really, really iron deficient in your diet. I've, eat, <laughs> I've eaten <laughs> burnt steak before. That's not not for me, no. sir. That's I would like to take uh, like two or three hours and just study this creature's corpse. Sure. I mean, that's if your group allows you to do I won't allow it. <laughs> We're leaving now. Tails, I don't get have my a back. Pull Let's go. Right, she's like, "Stop being a nerd." <laughs> <laughs> That's very monk of you. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, shove you in a locker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'll just grab the the corpse and let's go. Do we want to poke in the cave a little bit, see if there's anything in there? Yeah, there might be. We did DM, kill the big is there thing. There anything that was in, in there? there? <laughs> DM's like, "Oh shit." <laughs> It's like, oh, then I'm going to bring out the Medusa There's now. There's a pile of manure. 50,000 skeletons come at you. You want to uh, roll for initiative? <laughs> yeah. uh, you guys... First things first, I'm going to roll a D100. I want uh -oh. you guys to agree high or low. Middle. See. I always say... Oh. The... Go low because it always rolls low, but then it's going to roll high because I said that. Okay, low. Everybody I said low. Hi, <laughs> everybody's high. Answer's high. high. Sure. Oh, high. All right, above a 50. Oh, Whichever one wins. Oh, good, good, good. I mean, I said high for the record. Very cool. All right, so now I know what's in the cave. You guys just need to roll an investigation to see if you find anything. Where's investigation? Oh, yeah, I got a minus one on that. Um, yeah. going to find yeah, a rock. Like That's what zero. I'm going to find. <laughs> oh, look at this rock, guys. Um, hey guys, it's a cave that collapsed. Earlier. Investigation is what you want? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, investigation. Does somebody want to help me so I can have advantage? Uh, I have DM inspiration you know and Bardic. But I already rolled. Well, so everybody I'm already rolled roll. except for Rowan. Rowan would give you aid. So that uh, you can roll with it. And then I don't have to roll. Holy cow. Five. You guys go into the cave. It looks <laughs> like a cave. There's rocks and stuff, and you find like little uh, piles of like rock turds. Um, I'm sorry. Like... 
<laughs> there's like <laughs> fucking stalactites hanging over stalagmites because uh, you know they come in pairs um and you find mr tail that there is like a strange set of grooves in uh in one of these stalagmites on the ground so if you have like the stalagmite right like this and then you have like there's like a groove that kind of looks like that at the top of one of them and your curiosity gets the better of you and you pull on the top and it pulls down and you hear a grinding of stone behind you as you reveal a hidden chamber uh, within this cave um, inside the hidden chamber uh, you find a couple of crates of old and uh, decayed food um, you find a couple of casks so small kegs like you know probably like five gallon little kegs of some uh it has like dwarven writing on the sides you assume that it's probably like dwarven ale or dwarven meat or something like that uh you find like three dusty casks of dwarven uh alcohol um I'm, and you find I'm an pretty old... sure genie volunteers to test to make sure <laughs> uh he's like yep it's good <laughs> he's, he's like he like tastes it. He's like, mm. he like smells. He like pours it uh, some into like a, a a glass that he keeps on him. He like swirls it around, smells it. Sommelier style. Yeah, he like slurps on it a bit. He's like, right. He like does that whole thing and smells it. Uh, he's like, seems like it's been aged twenty five years. <laughs> a fine dwarven mead. Um, and you guys find an old rotted, uh, rawhide bag. Uh, the bag's not useful anymore. It kind of just crumbles away, uh, in your hands when you try and pick it up. Uh, but in the bag are, uh, 25 gold pieces and 50 silver pieces. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, looks to you to be the remnants of maybe like an old smuggler's uh outfit uh like a hidden chamber for like things that people would be smuggling back and forth um <clears throat> but, uh, damn it sorry uh, <laughs> genie gets real drunk real fast starts playing some songs uh <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, we just heard on this uh yeah the, the, on that dwarven mead um yeah it doesn't look like there's much else in here um seems as though they were probably running alcohol when uh this uh this gorgon showed up there's some other you know statues and stuff broken up inside uh the remnants of people long since turned to stone uh, by this Gorgon. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you collect your, your small little treasure, toss it into the, uh, the wagon, which I am assuming you have, and, um, you make your way further into the woods. Uh, can we make one, uh, one more survival check for me? All of us? Uh, whoever is guiding the party. Looks like Quote has got it. Can I use it can DM for that? Effort. Sure. What do I roll for uh, DM inspiration? Uh, you roll advantage with DM inspiration. I just rolled because I rolled the first time. Wasn't too bad. Five, <laughs> That's, that's great. <laughs> you got advantage. Got the same number twice. I do love that when that happens. <laughs> hey, you know, it's a 1 in 400 chance that that happens, so that's special. 
in some regards. Um, <clears throat> with a 15 and a 16, you guys, it takes you a little bit longer than what you think it would just by looking at a map of the area. Like if you were going to go straight there, you're going to make a little, like, you know, a couple wrong turns here and there. Uh, <laughs> welcome in Cascadia. Two points poor, but hello. Welcome in. Uh, you guys eventually make it. Uh, you see, after a few days, you've probably been wandering on the woods now for almost a week, including the time it took you to get here. Probably like five or six days uh, wandering around the woods trying to find the ruins of Elantris, this ruined castle. Come uh, out into a clearing um, where there is like a dry, deep, deeply cut riverbed. Um, they're probably a good, you know, 15, 20 feet down. Um, and you can see a little bit north of where you are along this, you see the remnants of a ruined castle, the palisades crumbling. There's an old rickety bridge that is, you know, spans the... The gorge basically um to the other side and uh, <clears throat> since uh genie's not here this week and i know our vilmar is feeling a bit under the weather i think this is a good point to say through critical hits and critical fails these are the osrin tales thank you for playing everybody thank you for watching the show everyone Next week, uh, we will start here at the uh, the bridge that crosses over the gorge into the ruins of Elantris. Uh, I will hopefully have made an actual decision as to what's in this building. <laughs> I know roughly what's there. I'm just I've been waffling back and forth between the actual plot lines, uh, but hey you know it gives me another week to sit and not make a decision until the final <laughs> last moments when you actually force me into a narrative choice <laughs> but thank you so much for hanging out everybody we uh are gonna try and find someone uh to raid here um but please uh stick around for the raid um show whoever we choose some love remember you guys get more channel points if you stick around for the raid and we will uh you know love to have your uh participation next week when we do some more adventuring um uh, i'm gonna throw up the players thing here make sure to follow all of our lovely players on uh, the Twitch. And uh, yeah, have a, have a great week, everybody. You guys uh, want to let them know when, uh, when you're streaming while I look for uh, someone to raid. <laughs> well, um, uh... I stream chadist underscore chad uh, about three or four times a week. It's kind of all over the place. If you uh, throw that follow, you'll see the alert. Uh, mainly, I focus on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. We do a lot of FPS, uh, a lot of indie games. Uh, right now, we're doing Spirit Fair, Inmost, and the Rainbow Six Test Server. And I also stream with my wife. We do some fun games. Uh, last game we completed was God of War 3 on stream. I just randomly stream. So if you feel like you want to just kind of follow and, and see when I stream, that's when I do it. A bunch of kids at home right now, so it's randos. And I've got the same thing. I just stream on Twitch at Jobus25. And from time to time I stream random FPS RPG type stuff. Um, I stream every Monday. We watch a movie and uh, 
it's anything from 1924 to today, you never know what it's going to be. So come by and check us out sometime. I like the sounds of that. I've been watching a lot of film noir movies recently. Um, so good. I'm I'm a sucker for the hard boiled PI movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you guys, you know, take. Hey, you know what? If you want to, you want to hear me nerd out about that kind of stuff. Uh, I actually, a friend of mine wrote a noir script that I read dramatically on stream a couple days ago, maybe a week ago. It's in my highlights. You get to hear me do all my fancy noir voices, if that's something you're interested in. Um, But you can check out those kinds of moments right here on this channel during the week. Uh, I stream on Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays for the most part uh either in the afternoons or later at night eastern time here in the u.s uh i try and hit a three to seven window if i can my sleep schedule's been all fucked up so i've been streaming more about 10 p.m to like 2 or 3 a.m uh recently but i'm, I'm trying to get better <laughs> at being like a productive person during the day uh but you can hang out with me rack up those channel points to uh to, you know in, to to involve yourself more uh in our D games on saturdays um i have been working on some D maps for an rpg module that i'm producing uh that you'll be able to get here uh at the start of october uh is my my hopeful release date for anybody who subscribes to my patreon you know, exclamation point patreon <laughs> Uh, five dollars and up you get digital comic books and uh at the beginning of october uh, i'm gonna be putting out uh, this rpg adventure so you know if that's something you're into uh but anyway i stream like i said monday tuesday thursday friday and obviously saturday nights at seven o'clock for more D. we are gonna play some credits so that you guys know all the assets and music that i use uh and uh we will see you guys next week remember to stick around for the raid and uh yeah have a week everybody bye 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 thanks for watching <laughs>